Hello, ladies. Hello, hello. I'm so blessed to be here, and I hope you all are having a beautiful, beautiful day so far. Today is January 28th. It, it, we are nearing the end of the week, and we are continuing with our Free Indeed series. Today, we continue with uh, Believers in Bondage. Oh my gosh, this sounds incredible. We have unpacked Under the Influence with Stella, Beware of Demonic Spirits with Tiffany, Permission Granted with Esther, and today we have an incredible speaker who's going to be um, telling us about believers in bondage, what that means, and how we can break that bondage. I'm so excited. She is an incredible woman of God. She just walks in uh, complete faith, and she has been through trials, right? We all have been through trials, and she has come out of the other side, and she has broken free from so many things, just as we all have, and today we get to hear how God is going to do that for us, how he did that for her, and we're going to hear so many amazing things. So with that being said, I can't wait to hear her testimony along with today's lesson from our very own Sarah Tamaris. Wow, Myra, thank you so much. I always have to make sure I'm not wearing mascara when Myra is going to introduce me because she always makes me cry. But yeah, let's... Um, Real quick, I just have to say, whoever donated this sweatshirt to the ladies swap or or the, the sale thing that we did, God bless you. It has become my favorite warm sweatshirt. So thank you to all the ladies who gave and blessed every other lady's life. Um, let's go ahead and get into prayer because God has some amazing word for us today, right? Heavenly Father, thank you so much. First, for every single woman that is on this call today, dear God, thank you that they're giving of their time and thank you for that hunger and thirst for your word that brought them here. God, I ask you that you would just have your way. Lord, I ask that how this word ministered to me and did so much in my life, dear God, and in my family's life, that it would do the same for them. God, take Sarah out of this equation and just let it be you and Holy Spirit that speaks to every single woman on this call. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against anything that would try to hinder your word, anything that would distract from your word, any spirit, dear God, of, of division or, or jealousy or envy, dear God, any spirit of distraction. In Jesus' name, we bind it and we cast it out from this place, Lord, and we, we declare that our phones, that our laptops, that whatever device we're using to listen to your word today, dear God, that they are under your anointing, Father, and that for this time that we have, Lord, nothing else exists except for you and your word. So we thank you, dear God, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right, so we are going to go into um, today, it's believers in bondage, and I have a lot of scriptures, so I just want to get to it. Um, we're going to start off with uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, um, and the word of God says, the thief comes only to st steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they, meaning us, may have life and to have it to the full. Okay, so three of the beginning words are steal, kill, and destroy. That, that goes with the enemy. Okay, there's three things. If you go to, and then he says, I have come that you may have life. And in this version, it says, and to have it to the full. In other versions, it says life abundantly. I love how God just has to give one word for what he does. Like one word he's done. The enemy has to come up with like all these words just so he can sound like mean and intimidating. And God's like one word, I'm done. That right there should show us the amazing God that we're serving, right? But please keep in mind those three things. So believers in bondage. When we first hear the title of this um, lesson, it kind of seems like an oxymoron because we say to ourselves, if we are believers, how can we be in bondage? Well, Pastor Robert Morris gave this quote. He says, many believers cannot be free indeed because they don't believe that they can indeed be in bondage bondage. Okay. So a lot of times they are not able to see the bondage that they are in simply because it doesn't exist. Um, an example of this would be walk into your child's room on any given day that is not cleaning day and tell them this room is a mess. They will look at you and say, no, it's not mom. It's clean. 
they're blind to the mess that is their room. <laughs> and a lot of times we can be blinded to the mess that at times is our spiritual life. Okay. So we're going to start off in John chapter eight. And like I said, we've got a lot of scriptures, so I'm going to be reading and thank you um, to Myra or Sonia, whoever's doing the notes. Um, but we're going to start in John chapter eight, and I'm going to start off in verse 31. It says to the Jews who had believed him. Another word for someone who believes something is a believer. First word of our title. OK, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Um, this is kind of funny because these are Jews that are talking to Jesus, who Jesus is part of the Godhead. So he knew what had happened. And he says, we're Jews. Like, you know, Jesus doesn't know who they are. We're sons of Abraham. And they used an infinitive. They said, we have never been in bondage. Um, I kind of think that Jesus tried to hold back the chuckle on this one because he's good. I could see him in his mind going, really? So let's go back to the Old Testament and let's talk about the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, the Assyrians, the Grecians, pretty much any of the Eans or the Ites had you guys captive and in bondage. And oh, yeah, let's not forget about that 430 year stint in Egypt right? So they forgot about that. They're sitting here talking to Jesus Christ and they're saying, we've never been in bondage. You cannot be any more blind to bondage than that statement. Okay. And the funny thing is, is at the moment that they're saying this, they're also in bondage to the Romans. And if we look at all of the, um, the countries or the peoples that had taken the Israelites in captive, they were all idol worshipers. OK, so worshiping another God, another entity is is the main purpose of these people who are now taking over the people of God that's putting them into bondage. Here's your first word. The enemy wants to put you into bondage because he wants to steal your identity and your position in God. When you are in bondage, he keeps you a slave to, to him. He keeps you a slave to sin and he stops you from being a conqueror, a warrior and an earth shaker for the kingdom of God. You cannot move if you are bound and almost every single thing that God has called us to do that he has created us to do requires an action. If you are bound, you cannot do anything action okay so the enemy comes to try and put he comes to put you in bondage and one of the ways that he does that is by stealing your position in Christ okay he blinds us to the bondage that we have in our lives if you look in verse 34 of John he says very truly i say to you everyone who sins is a slave to sin okay well, but Sarah, I'm not out killing anyone. I'm not out um, stealing from anyone. No, but sin is described as disobedience to God. So when we are disobeying God, we are committing a sin. And if we continuously do it over and over again, when God says, I want you to do this, and you're like, mm, not in my plans today, because I'm planning to do something else, you are actually planning to sin because you are planning to disobey God. Okay, we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. The in John 10, 10, the enemy is described as a thief. If you go to John 2, 15, it's the story of when Jesus went into the temple and he used a whip to drive out the tax collectors and the merchants. But there's another version that calls them thieves and robbers. Why? Because they were there conducting business in the temple. And instead of people bringing their offering and their tithes, they were using that to buy the stuff that was outside of the temple. So the people that were conducting business were actually thieves and robbers. And what did Jesus do? He didn't sit there and go, please, can you please leave? I would like you to go. No, Jesus took his authority and a whip because sometimes, you know, 
for us moms, we use our chanclas. Sometimes you just have to have a sign of authority. And he went at these people and he overturned their tables and it says he drove them out. Well, let me tell you what, our temples are the temple of the living God. And sometimes we need to have Jesus come in there with the whip of the Holy Spirit and drive out the thieves and the robbers that are trying to do business with our souls. God never called you to be bound. He called you to be free and he created you to go out and be a conqueror. Okay. You cannot allow the enemy to steal your identity and tell you that you are a slave when you are actually a daughter of the most high God, a daughter of the King of Kings. And when these things come into your heart and try and tell you that you are something other than what is written in red in this big book, or little, if you use your phone, however it is, that's when you need to say, Holy Spirit, I need you to come in and whip it. Whip it good. All right. You need to get this stuff out of me because the only person, the only things should, that should be in here should be you and your gifts. So Jesus has to come in and he needs to clean us out. In verse 34, again, he says, very, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You have a choice. The enemy did not come up and just bind you because he had nothing else to do. You had a choice. And somewhere along the way, we, and I'll say we, because like I said, this, this came to me first. We opened a door somewhere, okay? The story Pastor Morris says, and it was an amazing example, is what happens if you hear a knock on the door and you go to the peephole or, you know, a little side window and you see these men there with masks on, right? And I'm, I'm going to make it real literal for us. And they've got probably, you can see their guns, you can see that they're weapons and they're like knocking on the door and you know that they're coming in to steal, kill and destroy. And all of a sudden you go, eh, and you crack the door open and you walk away. What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to tell you what, it's not going to be a good end for you. That's the same thing that happens when we spiritually open up doors. One of the ones that I know that has been touched on this week is pornography. And, and just like Pastor Moore said, you may not be into the hardcore stuff, but I'm telling you what, there are some scenes in some of these movies that I thought was okay to watch. It's not okay to watch. And if you are not turning off the button and moving on, and some of us need to say, Lord, whatever I saw, take it out of my mind. Don't let it affect me. Then you are opening up a door. Well, Sarah, I don't watch stuff like that. Okay, let's take it down to something simple. Who here has never been involved in gossip? Because when you open the door to that, you're opening the door to allowing yourself to think that you are better than someone else. You're allowing the door to judge someone else, to criticize someone else. And all of a sudden, that one little piece of gossip has now changed your attitude. And now you look at your brothers, your sisters, your husband, your family, everyone with a critical eye. You were not called to criticize. You were called to love. And I'm not saying that if somebody is doing something wrong, no, but you can go and love. I have been corrected by many of my spiritual leaders when I have been done in something wrong. But let me tell you what, they came and they told me to my face in love. They didn't say it over a cup of coffee with someone else behind my back. If it's the truth, you can say it to their face. If you can't say it to their face, then you need to think about what you're saying. Well, Sarah, I didn't say it. No, but you heard it. And you didn't tell that person to stop. Guilty by association. The only guilty by association that I ever want to have in my life is that I'm associated with Jesus Christ, with Father God, and with Holy Spirit. Everything else we don't need to have in our lives, right? So you got to be so very careful to the doors that you are opening up. You know, it was just a little white lie. They're not little. They don't have cover. A lie is a lie, okay? So we have to be careful to that. So continued iniquity, that's number one. When you continuously plan to cover up your sin, when you continuously con disobey God, when God is saying you need to let that go and you don't, that allows you to be in bondage. And here is one that God had to deal with me on, not letting go of hurt. Somebody hurt me. Somebody did something to me and I didn't forgive them, you know, or then I said, well, yeah, I forgive them, but 
there's no but when it comes to forgiveness. Either you do or you don't because that but keeps you bound. Don't be a bound but. I'm sorry, it just came to me. I had to say it. Don't be a bound but. And I don't mean that in any mean way. It's literally the one word. You know, because you you're bound. Well, if 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 I continue holding on to the hurt, then it justifies the days that they come and say something to me and I kind of talk to them kind of salty, kind of snippy, because they should be reminded of what they did. No, Jesus doesn't remind you of every single thing that you did. Jesus doesn't come up every morning to you and say, hey, I was nailed to the cross and I was torn into pieces and, and I had my ribs broken and a nail put through my ankles for you because you did this. No, every morning his mercies are new and God shows us how much he loves us. We have to let go of hurt. And I'm going to tell y'all, it's hard. I want to move on from this, but there's one thing that Pastor Cal said. He said, when we want to be healed by God, when it's something physical, we want it like that, like that instant. God, my stomach hurts like that. Ooh, I feel better. But when it's something emotional, we want God to take his time. God doesn't want to take his time. You want to take your time. God wants to immediately remove that from your heart so that you can move on, but you want to hold on to it because it allows you to justify yourself. And actually it allows you to be a victim. And I'm going to tell you what, another thing you were not called to be is a victim. You are called to conquer. Number two, how the enemy keeps you bound, continued illness. We're going to go to Luke chapter 13. And it's verses 11 through 13. Okay. He says, um, this is uh, a woman was there. Jesus was at the synagogue um, on the Sabbath and he was teaching. And 11 says, and a woman there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years, she was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately straightened up and praised God. So um, there's this woman. And, and if you guys, it, here's the key word. It said that she had been crippled by what a spirit for 18 years. And I'm not saying that every sickness is a spirit. It's not like I got a stomach ache, I'm, de I'm demon possessed. No, that's not at all what I'm saying. But when it is continuous, when it has been for a prolonged time, we need to get before God and ask him, Lord, is this a spirit that is trying to come and take over my body and make me sick? Because it gets to the point that we felt that way for so long that we think that it's just normal for us to be sick. No. Psalms 139, 14 says that you are fearful, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you perfect in his eyes. May not be yours. Maybe you want it to be a few inches taller. That's okay. God made you short for a purpose. Like I've always said, for, you know, good things come in small packages. I love being short. That's why. Okay. Maybe God, you wanted to be a different color. That's not what matters. God made you the way he wanted you because he needed you to be that you for a purpose. Because I may never understand what someone who is six feet tall struggles with, but I can understand what someone who's five foot two struggles. Let me tell you, some of them counters, you got to take like a flying leap to jump on them to go get your glasses from, but that's okay. And I know you guys are laughing going, that doesn't make any sense. No, but let me tell you what, you've got to stop comparing yourself to everybody else. You've got to stop finding the imperfections in yourself because that is another spirit that will come and bind you up. I'm not as pretty as her. I can't talk like her. I can't pray like her. God did not create you like her. His word says you you were fearfully and wonderfully made. He created you how he wanted you to be. And he wants you to walk in the freedom of the perfection that he has made in you. Don't be bound by comparison. Don't be bound by low self-esteem. These are not just illnesses of the body. It's illnesses of the mind. Some of us have walked around for years with low self-esteem, but we think, oh, that's normal. It's because I'm a girl. It's because I don't. Do not let society justify illness for you. Am I saying that there's no mental illness? Yes, there is such a thing as mental illness. And we need to pray for those people and we need to be understanding of them and we need to meet them where they are. But I opened up the door. Let me tell you how this happened, okay? 
This woman had been bound by a spirit for 18 years. What has any of us ever asked ourselves, what door did she open because of that? Right? I will tell you what door I opened. I was eight years old that led me to be sick of self-esteem until I was 39. My father, when I was eight said, you're fat, you're ugly, and no man will ever love you. I believed the lie. And 31 years later, it took 31 years for me to finally say one morning, God, I don't want this. This isn't mine. You said that you say I'm beautiful. You say I'm highly favored. You say that you have created me fearfully and wonderfully that you, the God of heaven and earth who works miracles, knit me perfectly in my mother's womb. I refuse that lie. I will not live under that bondage anymore. And I walk out in the freedom that I am who I am because you made me this way. Ladies, I am telling you, you were not klutz prone. That's an enemy. Somebody probably said when you were little, oh, she'll probably over, always trip over her feet. It wasn't funny. It was a lie and it was a curse that someone spoke over you. We need to have the Holy Ghost whip come in and start whipping out all of these curses that have been spoken over us. Just because someone said it to you doesn't mean that it's true. Pastor Bethany always says, who told you that? Look at the source. And if the source is not Holy Spirit, if the source is not the word of God, let it go. Move on and don't let it bind you up. But going back to the point of, so it says that it was a spirit. There are spirits of sickness that will try and come over you. There's huge spirit of oppression, spirit of depression. There's even physical spirits that can come over us. About three years ago, I was having some huge health problems. And then I ended up finding out that I had breast cancer in my left breast. And I was, the doctor had sent me in to get a mammogram and everything. She kept calling it everything but breast cancer because she, she was a believer and she knew I was a believer after everything that I had gone through people, you know, being told by doctors, I would never have kids, by the way, got two of them. They're really healthy and full of energy believe me, I know these children were sent by God. Okay. Then now, you know that, oh, she'll always be sick and blah, blah, blah. Let me, here now I am. And she's like, Sarah, it's this big. We're going to have to do surgery, blah, blah, blah. She just didn't want to call it cancer, but I'm not stupid. And so really quick. So I, I, my husband came and, and he found me in the garage one day and I was just in tears. And he said, I'm going to pray for you because you don't have anything. And he put his hand where it was and he prayed. And he said to me, Sarah, I saw the demon leave your body. You go in for those tests tomorrow. There's not going to be anything there. I went in for the test, two ultrasound technicians. And one doctor later, they said, we don't know why you're here. You can go home. You have a perfect bill. Do not be bound. You go to God and you say, God, whatever is in my body, whatever's in my mind, whatever's in my spirit, I want you to take it out. I got to hurry up and wrap this up. Hopefully you ladies will give me five minutes really, really quickly. The number third one is continued. And oh, so now, so when we go back to our keywords, one is continued influence, but your next keyword was to kill. He wants to kill your health and your peace of mind. Because if he kills your health and your peace of mind, he renders you unmovable. He renders you unactionable, and it stops what God wants to do in your life. Here's number three, continued influence. And this is what he wants to destroy, your influence over others. I'm not going to read um, the, the scripture, but I'll give it to you. It is in Mark uh, chapter seven, verse 24 through 30. And I'm going to give this to you really quick. This woman from Tyre, she was a Syrophoenician. Basically, she was half Syrian, which if we go back to Syria is where the spirit of pride Pride comes from and Phoenicia, uh, that's where the spirit of idolatry comes from. So she is a prideful idolater. Okay. Can't be any more bound than that. Comes up and she tells Jesus, My daughter is being troubled. Can you please heal her? 
What this woman had opened up to her life was now affecting her daughter. Her daughter was demon possessed. We need to be so very careful about the doors that we open because not only will it affect us and our marriages, it goes to our children. Your children, the word of God says that our children are an inheritance from God. They are the greatest blessing. If you are not going to be a faithful steward of anything else, and actually, no, you should be a faithful steward of everything God has given you. But number one priority is your family. And at the top of that is your children. They are the upcoming generation. They are the ones that when we can't anymore, they will step in and they will fight. And we have got to be so careful. If we are guarding our hearts, we have to double guard theirs. Be careful of what you, not everything on Disney, not everything on Netflix, not everything on anything that is electronic do they need to see. Be careful of the movies they're watching, the cartoons they're watching, the games they're playing, the music they're listening to, because there are evil spirits that will come and try and attach to them. And so she goes up to Jesus and she says, I need you to heal her. And there's this story about how Jesus says, well, I can't take the bread, Jesus, bread of life from the children. He was talking about the Jews and he said, and give it to the dogs. He was not calling this woman a dog, y'all. Let's not get offended, okay? It, and I don't have time to explain the whole the whole uh, biblical terminology, but there is a scripture that says that outside of the gates of heaven, there are dogs. They're not talking about poodles and chihuahuas. They're talking about the murderers, the sinners, those that are lost. What Jesus was saying is, I came to the bread, to my children, to those who need me. I can't be taking it away and giving it to you, to, to a lost person or a dog. Here is how you set yourself free from all of this. She recognized who she was because she said, yes, my Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. She recognized I'm lost. I am bound up. I am a hot mess, Jesus, but with one crumb, one word that you give me, it will all be done. One word that you speak over me, not only will I be free, but my daughter will be free. And Jesus, this is paraphrased, you can read it, said, because of that statement, your daughter is now set free. When you humble yourself before God, when you recognize God, I'm bound up. Some of us know very clearly what was binding us up. And some of us, it's just, God, there's something there, but I can't pinpoint it. So Holy Spirit, go and take me there. He will show us. He will make us free. The only way I got free, ladies, was getting into the carpet and saying, God, it's this and this and this. I confess to my spiritual mother. I confess to my, my sisters. They prayed me through. They got on the floor. They prayed for me. In Stella's basement, my sisters went to war for me, for my family, for everything. I am so blessed because CFTN has had women that I know, and I can't call them all out, but they're listening, and I know they know who they are, that, that they have prayed for me. But I had to first say, I got this, that it, I'm, I'm a little messed up, and I'm going to need y'all to help me out. This is the last scripture that I'm going to give you guys. It's 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. That scripture right there tells you how to become free. Humble yourself. Pray to God, turn from what it is that you are doing and allow God to free you, allow him to restore you. And I will tell you why it's so important. Freedom is not just freedom for you. You don't need to be free just so that you can walk. You need to be free because there is a world out there that is crying out in bondage and they need you to go out and fight for them. If not me, then who? And if not now? Then, Heavenly Father, thank you for this word, Lord. Lord, I just pray that the beating and what you were trying to get across, God, that it came through to everyone, Lord. Father, I ask you that these scriptures, that, that your word would be sealed on our hearts. And I ask you, Father, that we would really take some time and come to you and ask you if there is anything in our heart that is, that is bound, God. If there is any door, any window, any crack that we have opened up to the enemy for him to bind us up, 
Lord, he came to steal, kill, and destroy, but you came to give us life and life in abundance. That means, dear God, that we can be abundantly free, abundantly healthy, abundantly at peace, abundantly moving in our calling and the gifts you have given us in our ministries, dear God, that our families can have peace and abundance, that our relationships can be healed, restored, and be blessed, Father, that it doesn't matter the mess that we come to you as, dear God, but it is the restoration stored product. It is the free product. It is the new us that you have made that you use as a testimony, dear God, of the amazing power that is yours. So I ask you, dear God, that you would help us to set aside any hurt, any pride, any fear, and just be so honest with ourselves, dear God. And with you, you know it, but sometimes we need to be honest with ourselves, Lord, and, and just bring to you everything, Father, and accept your freedom, accept your life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, Sarah. That was amazing. I know it's going to be always amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so honest, so bold, and so transparent. I, I encourage every woman here to just be as honest and transparent and bold. Uh, seek that courage in what God is calling you out of. Seek that strength from him and press into him. And right now, if, um, if you'd like, uh, actually, Right now, we will open the floor to commentary, and I encourage everyone to just speak speak from whatever, wherever you, you are right now, and we will listen, and we will lift you in prayer. Um, that being said, if you have any prayer requests, please put them in the chat below, and um, we, will, we will get to those at the end. Thank you, Sarah, so much. You did a